in talking about neurobiology and the sensory neurons and how we perceive things, one of the ways that we perceive things is hearing through the ear. And in the IB biology syllabus, they want you to know how the eye works and they want you to know how the ear works. And the ear works relatively simply here. So let's look at a quick diagram. An ear of corn. If you listen to corn, you can actually hear your way out of the maze. <laughs> Pina is what this flap is. So this ear flap that's hanging out on the outside. And um, it helps to focus the, the sound waves, basically. If you just had a hole in the side of your head, you'd have a much more difficult time perceiving the direction that sound is coming in. So you can play around with this by cupping your hands behind your ears and you can actually hear better because you're basically bouncing more waves into this little ear canal over here. So these are the different parts that you need to know. And in the next slide, we'll look at the specific uh, process by which we perceive sound. Pina, auditory canal, and here you gotta, your ear kind of cleans itself. There's been a lot of debate about whether you should actually go in and try to clean the wax out. So if you're not good at it, you can actually do more damage, including rupturing your eardrum, which is not a good thing. Semicircular canals are for, important for balance, not so much for the perception of sound. But um, we've talked about that in one of the previous videos. These bones of the middle ear, we're going to name them in the next slide, will transfer the vibration. So sound waves are going to come in. And this is important. You can only hear because we, we, we hear because there's air around us. And air can actually transmit these vibrations. If you're in outer space, there is no air to transfer these sound wave vibrations. And so there are no particles to carry that energy. So me talking to this microphone right now, as I talk, my vocal cords are vibrating and sending these waves of vibrations through the air and the microphone has a very sensitive diaphragm that's picking up these vibrations and turning them into an electrical signal that my computer is uh, turning into audio basically so it's pretty amazing about how sound actually works and that how we are actually very good at interpreting this information and turning it into language and singing and everything like that a bone to protect audio auditory nerve the cochlea we're going to talk about that as well too that has fluid in there and also uh, little tiny hairs that will detect the movements of the sound and transfer them to the auditory nerve something called the round window which we'll see and the oval window which is up here the eustachian tube this is probably most well known for your ability to balance the pressure inside your ear with the pressure that's outside. You all have experience when you get an airplane and you fly up, even though the uh, air is pressurized inside the cabin, there are still small changes that are going on and in pressure. And so you equalize by doing the try to kind of thing and then you feel better and you feel less pressure and you can hear a little bit better as well too. So how sound is perceived. We're going to take a look. I already mentioned sound is caused by air molecule vibrations and the sound reaches the eardrum and the eardrum will start to vibrate. This transfers the vibrations to these bones of the middle ear, the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. As a result, those vibrations are amplified and they're amplified. So the vibrations and if you talk, if you look at a sound wave on a oscilloscope amplification, you're basically changing the height of these vibrations and so that's the function of these bones is to amplify that sound. The stirrup will transfer the vibrations to the oval window then this creates vibrations in the cochlea, the fluid filled cochlea and there are little vib the vibrating fluid causes the little hairs to actually be detected or stimulated and that will send information through nerves, through neurons uh, to the auditory nerve which will be connected to the brain and our brain will then process that information. Different frequencies affect different parts of the cochlea. So lower tones versus higher tones will have a different effect on the little hairs in your cochlea. And so that's why your brain can tell the difference between louder sounds and higher frequency sounds and lower frequency sounds. As you get older, your ability to hear some of these really high frequency sounds uh, tends to decrease over time. So that's why every year I have to go do a health check. And one of the things they do is they check your hearing. They play that little beep, and then you have to say, yes, I hear it. Yes or no. But uh, what I usually do is I just look at the fingers of the person who's doing the test and I can tell when they're pressing the button. Not a very well designed experiment. So when I see their finger press the button, I go ahead and say, yes, I hear it. <laughs> I'm so clever. The round window prevents damage to tissues by preventing pressure changes. 
that is how you perceive sound. Protect your ears. We all love, li love listening to music. A lot of bass. A lot of bass. But don't turn it up too loud. Otherwise, you're going to end up like me. I play the drums as well, too. So that's not very good. I need to get some ear protection before I play drums next time. Anyways, enjoy.